Um, this is about the telephone and uh, what I try to do with this research is try to connect uh, the three theories from Roger Wilson and uh, Christensen. Um, so basically we're going to look into like the innovative solution and disruptive technology say, uh, for Christensen, elements of communication for Rogers and suppressors and accelerators for Wilson. So the past, uh, well in 1982, that's when the, uh, the land uh, telephone arrived into Mexico. Uh, one of uh, uh, the first uh, suppressors that he had it was the patent that Bell had and uh, the, the government tried to uh, give incentives for companies to innovate the telephone but they couldn't do anything because, the, um, because of the patent. So, and then uh, in 1972, uh, Mexico, the Mexican government took over the, um, the telephone uh, industry. So uh, Telefonos de Mexico was created. So in 1991, two things happened. The government decided that in order to uh, um, allow uh, the growth in the um, telephone industry, they had to privatize it, and they did. So Telmex was created, and but they give this to someone that had a monopoly. So actually the government gave permission to this particular individual to have monopoly over it. At the same, the same year in 1991, the uh, cell phone was introduced um, Mex in Mexico. However, uh, it was very difficult because um, some of the uh, things that didn't work with the cell phone as well as with the um, land telephone was the fact that people half of the population in Mexico are poor and don't have formal jobs. So it was very difficult for them to have access to these two te technologies because of their requirements. They required to uh, have a job and, um, and also credit, which they didn't have any. In 1993, used to sell and take sell. There were two, um, two um, cell phone companies that were created in 1993. In 1995, what happened it was that Mexico had a, a big crisis, and Usacell decided to only have um, to only focus on business, and Telcel wanted to focus on the public, and they created that prepaid service, which was really good. Uh, in 1999, the party party calls pay was introduced, and that actually allowed other people to um, have their hands on this cell phone technology because. Um, they didn't have to pay when they received tel um, telephone um, telephone calls. Excuse me. In 2000, just so you can have an idea, to have a, a land telephone service costs about $24 a month, and the salary uh, a month was about $85. That was that's the minimum salary in Mexico, mm -hmm. so people could not afford that. However, with the prepaid service that the cell phone uh, represents for them, they could because they could only buy whatever minutes they need. Uh, in 2002, um, we can see that the uh, land telephone uh, infrastructure was only 13% penet reached only 13% penetration in Mexico. So that means that Telmex was not really interested in investing into that, um, and a lot of people didn't really had access to the telephone line, but they did into the um, uh, cell phone. 2004, um, the money issue was big in Mexico uh, because you could do business with your cell phone. So a lot of people that didn't have formal jobs, they, they was easier for them to communicate with their customers. So it was in a way, um, the cell phone, it was a disruptive technology for the land telephone and also change the way that people communicate in Mexico. So they, they use the cell phone accordingly uh, to their needs. So you can see right here in this uh, graph the, the growth of the land telephone in comparison to the wireless. And we can see that by 2004, actually, uh, it uh, reached what, what we call it um, uh, critical mass, because it reached over 60% of the population in Mexico and the uh, wireline didn't really do anything.